we come to worship this morning. We come with expectant hearts. We come with inquisitive minds. We come searching for hope, longing for truth, desperate for consolation. We come looking for you, God, that in this time you might meet with us. We might hear from you that your spirit may work within us, guiding, sustaining us for the work that we have to do, for the learning, for the disciple journey that we embark upon each day. Lord, we come to you in this time. We ask that this worship might give joy to our hearts, be acceptable in praise and worship to you. May it build us up and send us out. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mount me, mount me. Fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, full afresh on me. Mark chapter 1 verses 4 to 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mount me, mount me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, full afresh on me. When Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people, 
to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there are about twelve of them. Let's pray. Holy God, we want to thank you because you are the one who loves every one of us and calls every one of us, who wants to give gifts to every one of us. You bring life, you bring hope, you bring joy, you bring peace. So we praise you for who you are in our lives and in your world. And even though we recognise that so often, we also recognise that we often forget. And we often ignore the call that you put on us for a different life, a transformed life, a life in all its fullness. And we're sorry. So let us again hear today both your love and your call, but also your challenge and your forgiveness. So we turn to you again at a time when we need new beginnings, a time when we need new life. A time when we need peace. Amen. River, wash over me, cleanse me and make me new. Bathe me, refresh me, and fill me. over me lead me to Jesus feet cause me to worship and fill me anew spirit watch over me Jesus rule you but I feel I've tried 2021 and now after 10 days I'd like to send it back and get my money back and start again we didn't want to be here we didn't want to have buildings closed we didn't want to see the hospitals full to bursting we didn't want to see so many people being lost to this virus so we come for our thinking about this service in a very different place to where we wanted, where we hoped we would be in 2021. This passage, though, or both of them, are about not being where we expected to be. And we're using them to move us towards a covenant service that we're now going to have at the end of January. And thinking about baptisms here as a sign of commitment and it's interesting that we see in both the passage from Mark's gospel which ends with the baptism of Jesus and the baptism passage from Acts that baptism starts 
with that human decision that we want to start again. We want to turn over a new leaf. We want to be the people we feel we want to be rather than the people we have been to turn away from all that we've got wrong. And suddenly, in both passages, God changes it. And instead of the baptism being about us making a decision and then things happening because we've made a decision, baptism comes as something where we open ourselves and God acts. We see that for Jesus, the willingness by John to baptise him, by Jesus to, to be baptised, but it is God who acts and sends the Spirit like a dove. In that passage from Acts, it's more separated, isn't it? A baptism that they had in the name of John, they thought that's what they wanted to do to respond to God, but then sometimes later, they discover God turning up, the Holy Spirit coming upon them. And we, you can pick every single baptism that we see in scripture and they're all different in the ordering, in the way that things happen. But all of them have this element of a human decision, but then God acting. And within the Methodist Church, we rearranged our baptism service. I always love mentioning this as part of a baptism service. We rearranged it so that you get baptised before anybody makes any promises, because we recognise deliberately and consciously that it's God who acts and that we're welcoming the action of God as we welcome the person being baptised, as we baptise them in the name of the God who's already at work in their lives. And that's really powerful when we think about the journey that we're on towards our covenant service, that so often that difficult covenant prayer, so often the whole thing about this new start is about what we do. But that's never the key thing. The key thing is what God's already done and what we're allowing God to do. And that's not just relevant to the covenant service. It's not just relevant to baptism. But surely that's relevant to where we are in the world today. Our coping with the lockdown, our coping perhaps with overwork or with stress or fear or worry isn't what we do about it, but about allowing God to act, to transform us, transform our situations, transform our perceptions of our situations, to transform us into being part of that transformation for others. Don't let's limit what we can be and do in this pandemic to the things we can take up, to the self-help videos we can watch, to the new year resolutions to carry us through, but give ourselves the space to be ready for the God who loves each one of us to bring us to something better. Wait, be patient, but set ourselves up for the God who acts. Amen. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mount me, mount me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God. 
fall afresh on me. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we give thanks for this new day and as we focus on the baptism of our Lord, let us remember our own baptisms and our calling to follow Christ. May we be filled with the joy as our hearts overflow with love for you and all who we meet along our journey. May we walk in your way, live our lives for you and be mindful along the way of your presence each day. We pray for our Queen and government and the leaders in the rest of the world. Sharpen their consciences and give them the courage to make wise decisions and trying to meet the needs of all who suffer, especially as the pandemic continues worldwide. Father God, we pray today for our friends, our families and our Christian community that, united by our common baptism and despite being unable to meet in church and in person, we may be able to welcome the newcomer, the stranger and all who are vulnerable. We bring before you today all involved in education as they cope with all of the difficulties of homeschooling, providing schooling for the vulnerable and the children of key workers. Praying that their efforts will be rewarded and that they will cope effectively with all of the challenges and changes. Loving God, we pray for those who face difficulties in their personal lives, all who are sick or in pain, with depression or mental health problems, the bereaved, those with problems in their relationships, in their neighbourhoods or in their workplace. Give them a patient faith in their troubles and the knowledge of your love, peace and healing. In a moment of silence, please bring before God someone you are concerned for this morning. Mighty God, we remember those whom we love, who are no longer here with us, whose anniversary falls at this time and for all who have died recently. We give them thanks for their lives, well lived and for the happy memories. May they find rest in the eternal joy of heaven and let all who mourn their passing find comfort and peace in you. Faithful God, we thank you for making us your children, for feeding us with your spiritual food and for the promise that you listen to our prayers and answer our needs. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
So in gratitude for all that we have heard and received this morning, we end uh, with a blessing, not uh, just to be received, but to be given out. So I do invite you uh, to join with the grace. Um, if you have somebody in your house, then say it to them. If not, just say it aloud because we are joined together in our speaking, in our praying. Let's say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.